If you do find yourself in a situation where you need to remind the group or an individual of safety requirements or situations, there's several different ways you can do that. Uh, at the end of a general spiel, I will often say, and don't forget that if you need to go to the toilet, it's over there. Or I would say, and don't forget, if you have any rubbish, this is where you need to put it. So it's those gentle reminders, often at the end of another statement where you've been talking about a cliff or you're talking about the river or you're talking about something else, just throw in those don't forget statements. It'll often help keep them on track. If you do find someone who is doing the wrong thing, either deliberately or accidentally because they have forgotten, you can approach them and talk to them about something that's not that topic. But that's often enough just to sort of bring them back in line and it may give you a chance to say, just remember, if you have such and such, could you do it over there, please, Because for these reasons. If you find multiple participants are doing the wrong thing, maybe you didn't make it clear enough in your briefing. Maybe uh, that's something where you would stop the group you go and actually sit them down and go, oh, look guys, I've noticed four or five, six people uh, are all doing such and such. Maybe I didn't make it very clear. Um, what we really need you to do is to do this and direct them to the positive, certainly before you mention the negative, if you can. You know, what we need you guys to do is we need you to belay like this, or we need you to not throw stones off the top of the cliff, or we need you to not throw litter into the ocean. Uh, or if you're gonna go to the toilet, you need to go over there away from the drinking water. So you've got a range of situations like that where you would actually stop them and address them as a group and not single out any one person in making them feel stupid or silly or embarrassed about either having forgotten or just having done the wrong thing because you're trying to get them to have a good time even if they're perhaps choosing or making some bad choices at that location. If you do need to speak to an individual, you would certainly want to do it, you'd ask them to come aside and have a chat to them. And in a situation where it's not obvious to the rest of the group, you certainly wouldn't yell at them or belittle them in front of the rest of the group. And look, the only time that would ever be appropriate if it was a dire situation where their safety or other people's safety were at risk, that you need to quickly intervene sometimes in a loud voice so you can be heard that someone would need to stop something because they're about to hurt themselves very badly or they're about to hurt someone else. If you have had to intervene in that manner because of their behavior, it is also then appropriate that you would talk to them after, afterwards. You might apologize and go, look, I'm really sorry that I had to yell, um, but what you're about to do was potentially a life-threatening situation that I needed to stop. Um, I'm sorry if it did embarrass you, but I felt I had no option because of that. And that's entirely appropriate. It is highly likely as an assistant, it'll be your job to gather up the equipment and check that everything's been returned and that everything's in proper working order. During any act, and you should be keeping an eye on that in regards to equipment throughout the activity. Throughout the activity, things might get damaged. Um, so they actually might be need to be replaced mid-activity. Unlikely, but it does happen. Sometimes uh, maybe ropes were rolling or rubbing on a rock in an unexpected way um, that slipped off the protection that was in place and that some of it's got damaged and you need to go, wow, that rope's been damaged during use. We actually need to pull that rope up and change it over with another rope. So you might need to do it mid-activity, but most likely at the end of the activity, when you're packing up the equipment, when you're lapping the ropes, when you're um, packing up the raft, when you're putting away the kites, you'll notice that maybe a buckle on a life jacket's been broken and you'll need to retire that jacket. Uh, sometimes when you get the equipment ready at the start of the day, you'll notice that and you'll need to put that jacket in a place where someone else is not gonna pick it back up and put it back in to the general use pile. Okay, you may need to label it. You may have a tagging system where you tag it as needing repair. It may just be a rubber band with a tag ha hanging off it. So it's been identified as needing, as not safe for use. Okay, you'll often find that at the end of the trip, clients won't always tell you if they've accidentally broken the equipment. Um, that's okay. They're pretty worried that they're gonna be charged for it. Um, most operators accept a level of breakage uh, throughout the use of the equipment. Um, you wouldn't want clients to be careless, 
but say with rock climbing, you'd rather them tell you if they've dropped a carabiner and it therefore needs to be retired, um, rather than them worrying about, I broke it and I'm gonna be charged. That might be part of your briefing at the start of the day. Don't worry if you accidentally break some equipment, We'd rather you let us know, we're not gonna charge you for it. We've allocated for that in our business, but we really need you to tell us if you've broken it so we can replace the equipment. And you can set their mind at ease uh, in that way at the start of the day. So as you're collecting equipment, you might need to log it back in um, and just make sure you've got all the life jackets, that nothing was left behind. And that is often a role that I would give one of my assistants and go, can you just check we've got all the gear whilst I'm doing X, Y, and Z. At the end of the activity too, uh, not only is it important to encourage them in their technique and how they've gone the day, but also have feedback forms. Feedback is vitally important to you because there may have been things going on that you didn't notice that you need to, to change so you can offer a better service next time. Okay, it's really important that no one takes offense at feedback uh, that they just take it as, hey, I didn't realize that, or gee, that's really good feedback. I now know, so I can make that adjustment. There's nothing worse than not knowing why someone uh, is not returning to your trips or you're having a fall off in clients. And it's for something that you could have easily fixed had you had a feedback form where clients could have said, it was really great, but we wanted such and such, or we feel that the flyer you sent out did not match the activity we got to do. Uh, so um, it may be as simple as, oh, we need to adjust the flyer because we thought it was saying this, but everyone else who's receiving the flyer felt it was saying that. So you don't want to be misleading them accidentally and you want to be providing the service that they're expecting. So getting client feedback in a debrief, as well as knowing how they're feeling. Are they okay? Were there any unknown injuries that have occurred that no one happened to mention that you would want to record um, and, and address before they leave. The debrief at the end of the day is equally as important as the debrief at the start of the day. And certainly you can ha give them the opportunity to do anonymous feedback and it's best for them to do that on the day. Not because once they leave, it is likely that they would not find the time. So if you allow space for that in your debrief, it's often a good move for you to pick up any adjustments you might need to, to help your business or your service. One thing you would definitely wanna do as an assistant leader is for you to get personal feedback from the leader of the activity. Uh, it's invaluable for you to learn how you can improve, um, even have a mentor that you can talk to about things you thought went well, things you thought didn't go well, things you would like to change for next time and have them help keep you to account in making those improvements in your practice. It's important for your professional development um, that you have someone that can help you too, that you're not just floundering by yourself because you don't know how to improve if you want to. So you should try and tee up those opportunities at the end of the activity with the activity leader so they can give you some quick feedback or have coffee with them on a regular basis so you can discuss things you may be struggling with or areas you wanted to improve.